I'm almost embarrassed at how easy my Spanish chicken is to make, but on the other hand, I revel in it as well. I'm using chicken thighs. I just do not understand why people are so obsessed with using chicken breasts all the time. As far as I'm concerned, chicken thighs are half the price and have twice the flavour. So I'm smooshing them about in the oil skin side down, then turn them up so that when they roast, the skin will crisp and become beautifully golden, bronze actually. And now it's the chorizo which makes this chicken Spanish. And you can use regular chorizo, the sausages, not the salami, and in which case cut them in half or in quarters. But I love these little baby ones, my plumptious beauties. And as they roast, they will give off their wonderful paprika oil. And that is what the chicken and everything roasts in. This really is a one-pan meal because you've got your potatoes in as well and they roast up so gorgeously. The tray does start looking pretty crammed but you want that because as everything roasts things shrink a little and you want this to look abundant at all times so don't be afraid if it's pretty crowded now. And this isn't the last ingredient because I want some chopped onion. I sort of scatter the onion over, but at the same time trying to tuck pieces in where there are any empty spaces, not many. So gorgeous. Just a couple of things. I want some dried oregano on top. And, because I once had some chicken and orange when I was in Spain, some orange zest. Now I'm only using the zest because I like the depth you get from the orange oils in the skin and also really because if I were to add the juice then the chicken would braise rather than roast. I just love this. I mean look how beautiful. So there's a salad to make and this goes in the oven, 200 degree oven for an hour and I can kick off my flamenco heels and fiesta. And ole. I like using cos lettuce here, sometimes called romaine, a l'américaine. But just tear whatever lettuce you want into bite-sized pieces. Salt. And some sherry vinegar. Just about a teaspoon, if that. And delicious, proper olive oil. Just toss everything together. I find it easier using my hands, but you may use whatever implements you prefer. Salad servers in. So everything's done, and I have nothing but some tea lights and, of course, some friends to attend to. Coming? No. Shall I serve you things? Hang on, look, these are like little baby chorizo. It's nice doing things that just go in the oven, I find. You know, Anita, for once I am grateful that you're a delicate eater because it means I'm, I've got some for my breakfast. You seem kind of joking. Okey doke. Some beautiful berries. A little biscuit crown. Lovely colours there. You can go first. Thank you. No, it's my favourite. I mean, it's nice and fluffy, mm. and it's got that nice citrus tang. Anything lemony for I like choice. tang. So, Nigel, tell me, uh, how do I make this? I'm not going to tell you. Please. <laughs> 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 Any excuse for a quesadilla at breakfast. Riddle on, and I have the best excuse there is. Leftovers. Okay. 
quesadilla really is just a cheesy tortilla. It's like a toasted sandwich with tortilla instead of bread. But I am adding chicken chorizo potato. It has a sort of dual inspiration. One is what I have left over, and the other is when I was in Kansas last, I had uh, a quesadilla for breakfast, and it did come with chicken, a kind of peppery cheese, and potato, and it was so heavenly that I thought this really was a very easy way of emulating it. And since I have the chorizo, I don't need to have a sort of peppery cheese. Right. On one half, I'm oh, trying to do it on one half. And then, potato. We have a double carbohydrate moment. Always good. And now, it's rather a ridiculously large knife for such a small sausage, but... And a bit of chicken. The wonderful thing about a quesadilla is that although I love toasted sandwiches, I think with a quesadilla, because the tortilla wrap is so thin, you get a much better contrast of textures because you have a crisp outer casing and then goo and gunge and chew. I think that will do for now. Turn it over. In it goes. And I have not fashioned myself, but Ken the Builder gave it to me, a brick covered in foil, and that will help press it down. In fact, you could just sort of hold a spatula over it, but I rather like this device. Right, I'm going to prepare my morning feast by clearing off this, otherwise I'll just make another one, and that's not right. Now, let us see. Oh, it sounds good. And if you want, you can oil the outside to make it fry more, but I don't really think it's necessary. And if I think extra oil is not necessary, you can take my word for it. Look, can you see the bits of chorizo and cheese beginning to ooze out? I think I am ready. Turn this off. And of course, the washing up is easy because you haven't got any oil or anything in there. this and that's what I love one set of ingredients a blowout dinner restoring breakfast double bubble it's precisely when I'm frantically busy and feel that I haven't got time to cook I really need my evening meal to be particularly fabulous. Luckily, I just need one ingredient and I can make my super fast, super simple salmon supper. My lemony salmon and cherry tomato couscous is fantastic for when you have friends over midweek. But you know what? I like it even better when there's just me. There is my salmon, couscous, definitely. Start off with that so it can soak up and cook while I get on with everything else. Beautiful little grains. I know this is not the proper way of cooking them. I should be doing all sorts of things, but I'm lazy and this is my shortcut. A bit of salt. I want some gorgeous orange paprika. This is smoked paprika and what it gives is a bit of warmth, a bit of fire, like the smoky embers from a fire. Stir it in a bit, I think. And for more warmth, more of a pepperiness, and funnily enough, much more peppery, I think, than the paprika, some freshly grated ginger. That's enough. All I need to do to cook this, however improperly and lazily, is to cover it just by 
centimetre or so of boiling water so the couscous will absorb the spices and the hot water and I can get on with salmon. I think I'll preheat the pan. I don't mind that there's ginger on the zester because a little bit of ginger in with this lemon zest will be just lovely actually. And now back to a bit of paprika, teeny bit here as much as anything to enhance the fantastic coral colour of salmon. Garlic oil, only a teeny bit to help, I suppose it's like an aromatic glue. Bit of casual smearing, a bit like the tabloids. In it goes, look how beautiful it is. And while the salmon cooks, I'm going to get on with the final part. I have been to Pixie Land and got a red onion. You could just as easily use a couple of spring onions, but I love the look and taste of red onion here. Let's chop it fairly fine, but to be honest, you could chop this coarsely and you'd still have fine bits. So here we are. A bowl for my red onion and just as I zested this earlier to go on the salmon I want the juice to go on top of the red onion just to take out some of that acrid burn that's fine and to mix up with that it is after all cherry tomato couscous so I rather feel some cherry tomatoes would be in order Halved just so the cut sides breathe in the lemony juices, lemon and onion juices, really. Now, the last little tomato, and I want a bit of salt, not a lot. And then back to the garlic oil, only a dribble. I just want to tumble these about so they're all covered. And I think it would be perfect time to turn over the salmon. Right, and now for the ritual unveiling of my couscous. Fork up like rice. Couscous has to be stirred with a fork, not a spoon, and into those wonderfully sweet little bobbles of pasta. Go the sharp tomatoes and onion and lemon. Gorgeous, they're like little cheeks. Much as I'd love to have this whole bowl myself, I think even for me it's too much, but it will be lovely just to have a bit cold in the fridge, a bit of grilled halloumi or something tomorrow. Beautiful. And now the salmoni. Not that we're in Italy for this. And I fancy just a bit of coriander. I want a bit of its earthiness and a sharp shock of green. But other than that, I don't want to do anything except eat it. Mmm, the perfect stove-side supper, but still special. Mm. Just because I like cooking doesn't mean I constrain myself to homemade food. After all, there are many eating opportunities in the world and I aim to celebrate as many of them as possible. No, can I have some chips, please? Now, I've nothing against having just chips with salt and vinegar, but there's something I love to do with chips, and that's make what a friend of mine calls a vegetarian kebab. So you get some flatbread, you lay it out in front of you, and then you slather it with hummus, and then just put a couple of handfuls or so of chips on top of that, sprinkle over coarse salt, squeeze of lemon, make a package of it, and apply to face. I mean, it's absolute heaven. 
and I'm ready for it.